Behold your King. Evangelist Gloria Marjorie coming to bless you with the Word of God. The title of this program is Jude, Brother of Jesus. So, thank you, beloved, for letting me tell you about my Jesus. But to this, the very heart of the Gospel of Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus paid a terrible price so we wretches could be saved and go to heaven. And so then, we will not go to hell. But we must receive the blood sacrifice of Jesus first. Without the blood of Jesus, we cannot go to heaven. For the Father said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. This means you go straight into the arms of God and be in heaven forever with Jesus. Nothing is more wonderful. So Jesus endured all the torment which they did to him. Jesus knew everything they were going to do to punish him with. For he told his disciples what he was going to suffer. But they understood not. But Peter did. So, I will. Peter said, I will not forsake you, Jesus. And he turned to Peter and said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Quoting Mark chapter 14, verse 26 through 72. Just let me find it. Let's see now, Mark, chapter 14. Okay, I, I got it now. Chapter 14, verse 26. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said unto them, All you shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, Although all shall be offended, yet will not I. And Jesus saith unto him, Verily I say unto thee, That this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, Thou shalt deny me thrice. But he spake the more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all, and they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he saith to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he taketh with him Peter, James, and John. And began to, they began to be so amazed and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry you here and watch. And he went forward a little, and he fell to the ground and prayed, that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me, nevertheless, not will I, but what thou wilt. And cometh, and findeth him sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, Sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch you and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither was they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take a rest. It is enough that hours come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. And immediately while he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, with him, a great multitude with a sword and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he betrayed him. And he that betrayed him had given him a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he take him, and lead him away safely. And as soon as he was come, he goes straightway to him and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. And they laid their hands on him and took him. And one of them that stood by drew a sword and smote a servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Are you come out as against a thief with swords and with staves to take me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you took me not, but the scriptures must be fulfilled. And they all forsook him and fled. 
and they followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body, and the young man laid hold on him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes, and Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest, and he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death and found none, for many bear false witness against him. But their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. Neither so did the witness agree together. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. And again the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and said, What need? Do we have for further witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy, what think you? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to puff at him and, and to say unto him, Prophesy! And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, and thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. And a maid saw him again, and began to say to them, It stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeth thereto. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. And the second time the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. Oh, how sad is that? So... Pilate tortured Jesus and they spit in his face and gave him the T9 lashes which was beyond cruel. Then they put a purple robe on Jesus. People shouted, crucify him. Pilate had said, I find no fault in this man. Pilate had said to Jesus, are you a king? Jesus answered, thou sayest. The people shouted, we have no king but Caesar. Then when Pilate heard that, he was afraid and ordered Jesus to be scourged. But they shouted, Crucify him! So Pilate had Jesus nailed to a tree, and Jesus was dead three days. But after that came great, great victory, when the huge stone was rolled away, and Jesus arose from the dead. How wonderful! Our Redeemer lives forever. And so one day, because our Redeemer lives, we will also rise from the dead. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Beloved, were you there when they crucified my Lord? There's a song that says that sometimes it causes me to tremble. But for me, sometimes it causes me to cry, beloved. And now treasures from the word. Quoting John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. And now, beloved treasures from the Word. John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, whatever I do with thee, mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever 
he said and you do it and they will set the six walled pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece Jesus saith unto them fill the water pots with water and they fill them up to the brim and he saith unto them draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast and they bear it and when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was but the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and saith unto him every man at the beginning doth set forth wine and when men have well drunk then that which is worse but thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Um, next. John chapter 1 verse 12 through 24. Quoting now. After this he went down to Capernaum, him and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. And the Jews also were at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money, and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my father's house and house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The seal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover on the feast day, many believed in his name, and when they saw the miracles which he did, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. So, love it. We're going to listen to Psalm 24. This is the Psalm of King David. Quoting now, The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him and seek thy face. O Jacob, Selah, lift up your heads, O he gates, and be he lift up you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, even lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. And he is the King of Glory, Selah. And now, beloved, let's take a listen to the title of this program, Jude, the Brother of Christ. Take a listen, beloved. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained 
to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, unto the judgment of the great day, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things, they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran, ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward and perished in the gains of Korah. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds whose trees, oh, let's see, these trees withered without fruit twice. Twice dead. Let me see. Yeah, twice dead without fruit, twice. And plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also. The seventh from Adam prophesied of these things. Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all the hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking off to their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember you the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that he told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who have separated themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some having compassion, making a difference, and others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment of spotted, the garment of spotted by flesh, by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Saviour, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Yeah, that's this. Beloved, how wonderful is this? This is a wonderful teaching the brother of Jesus gives us, beloved. So take heed. Beloved, is your name written in the book of life? Wow, wow, oh beloved, let me let me read to you what will happen to you if your name is not written in the book of life. And maybe you were one of those shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Oh beloved, let me read to you what will happen if your name is not written in the book of life. And I'll quote out of Revelation chapter 20, verse 12 through 15. Quoting now, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, 
according to their works, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and here it comes, beloved, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I repeat, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Oh, beloved. Oh, beloved. This is the day for your salvation. You choose Jesus. You will not go into the lake of fire. This is your chance to pray for your salvation. Just pray with me, beloved. Do not hesitate. Today is the day of your salvation. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We come with praise and thanksgiving and glory to your holy and high name forever. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died to save me, and I thank you so much. I confess that I am a sinner, my Lord, and I repent from my sins, and I turn to you. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my God. Adonai, Yeshua, everything you created me to be and everything you give me to use in this life, I surrender all to you, my God. Please take total control of me, be in the driver's seat of my life. I do understand that now my body is the temple of God. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Help me to glorify you and exalt you and magnify your holy name and as well be a witness for you. Thank you that I did not need to do anything for my salvation because Yeshua said, it is finished to Palestine in the Hebrew. Freely I have been given. Help me, Lord, to freely give the gospel to others. So, my Lord, because your commandment says, Thou shalt not have any gods before me. I will surely not have anything to idolize. I will not love anything or anybody more than I love you. Once again, what can I say? But thank you so much for loving and saving me from eternal punishment. I now declare that I am a blood-bought, sanctified, justified child of the Most High God, and I wear the robe of righteousness in Christ. And so I know, Father God, that when you see me that day, and I shall surely come to stand before you, and you see the blood of your shoe for me, your arms will receive me as your very own child, Father. Forever you are my God and forever I am your child. Jesus, I confess that you are now my Lord, my Saviour, my Redeemer, my Messiah, and my coming King of Kings and Lord of Lords and my God. Jesus, while you were on that cross, you said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I'm so glad that I'm forgiven and all my praise and thanks is to you, Adonai Yeshua. Yeshua, you said, no man comes unto the Father but by me. Yes, my Lord, I believe there is no other way to the Father. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come to the Father but by you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. God is three in one. My God, my God, thank you for receiving me in my prayer of surrender. I know now that my name is written down in glory and that your holy angels are rejoicing in heaven. Help me, Lord, always to glorify your holy and wonderful name. And it is in Yeshua's beautiful and majestic name, I pray, Father. Amen. Father, thank you that for by grace am I saved through faith, and that not of myself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest I should boast. Beloved, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Beloved, my prayer is that after hearing God's word, you are brought closer to Jesus. God honors faith, so faith comes by hearing the word of God. Shalom. Beloved, if you have just prayed to receive Jesus as your Lord, congratulations, you are part of the family of God. You are the king's kid. Your relationship with Jesus as your Lord will be exciting and satisfying under his guidance. So, beloved, let God's will be done for you and not your will. Beloved, just surrender all to Jesus. God's will, not our will, is always the best. You will have what God says you can have. You will be what God says you can be. You will learn how faithful and good God is. Wow! Heaven will be your final destination. You will be with Jesus. Beloved, this amazing, kind, compassionate Jesus who died to save you from eternal punishment wants you to spend time with him. How will you spend time with Jesus, beloved? Here's how. 
you read his word every day, then you pray. Just talk to Jesus. Tell him everything. Jesus will be listening with love and compassion because you are precious to him and he loves you dearly. So you can say, Abba, Father, that's Daddy God. Now, beloved, when you pray, how shall you come to God? Beloved, you will say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, my Lord. Why? Because Jesus said nobody can come to the Father, only through him. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Next, you start praising and thanking and blessing God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Well, beloved, now you are ready to make your requests known to God. God will always listen and answer you. Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes no, sometimes not now. God will always do for you what is best and right for you. Don't give up. Pray without ceasing, beloved. Just have the deepest respect and reverence and worship for God. He alone is worthy. There is no God like Jehovah. Yahweh, our God, is God, period. The word of God says, be still and know that I am God. Beloved, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Quoting now Isaiah 40, uh, 40 verse 1 and 2. Comfort you, comfort you, my people, saith your God. Speak comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished and that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of the Lord's hand double for her sins. End quote. Beloved Jew, we are in the last days. Please receive Jesus as your Redeemer, Messiah, and God. Without receiving the blood sacrifice of our Messiah, you cannot be in heaven. When the Father sees the blood of God, sacrificial lamb of God, without blemish or spot, this is Jesus, our Lord, he will pass over you. If you are not believing in Jesus, go ahead. Ask God to show you that Jesus is your Messiah, and God will answer you. Beloved, always pray for the Jewish people. They are our brothers and sisters in Christ our Lord. Our Messiah is Jewish. The word of God says our salvation comes from the Jews. Yeah, that's because our Messiah is Jews. Beloved, this is an exhortation. Do not be mean or rude to the Jewish people. What you do to a Jew, God will do to you. An example of that is found in the book of Esther, where Haman had gallows prepared to kill every Jewish person in the land. But what happened? The king turned it around. And Haman and his sons died on the gallows. Beloved, come, let us love the Jews and give them the gospel. The word of God says the gospel of Jesus our Lord is to the Jew first, then to all others. When God says, comfort you, comfort you, my people, this is God telling us to do this. God says, I will bless those who bless thee, and I will curse those who curse thee. This is God speaking this to Abraham and to his seed, which is the Jewish people. Love it, just something to take note of. We Gentiles are also God's people, for we are grafted into the real olive tree. Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah. Glory, glory, glory to God in the highest. Evangelist Gloria. Marjorie is saying, God bless you. I love you. Now take a listen to the ironic blessing. God told Moses to bless the people with. God bless you, beloved. And now, Jonathan Kahn giving the ironic blessing. <laughs> of his grace upon every part of your life. The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob 
cause his glory of his presence to fall on you and the Lord give you shalom, life, fullness, peace, all the blessings of his love. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach in the name of Messiah Jesus, our hope in his name and all his people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Jonathan Khan. Yeah, now is Shireen to play on the strings. God be with you till we meet again. In loving memory of my beloved son and Shireen's brother, Emmanuel Christian, who is sheltered in the arms of Jesus. Praise God. Mm -hmm. 